Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about motor program based theory. Um, so central control oriented theories revolve around motor programs. So the idea that uh, the brain is organizing and creating all of our movement plans, essentially, um, those types of theories revolve around motor programs. So it's an entire category of theories. So there are lots of different theories that are part of that category. Um, they all attribute different degrees of control to the motor program. So in this context, what we mean by motor program is a memory representation that stores information needed to perform an action. Um, so again, there are lots of different theories that center around motor programs. Um, some center around the idea that there are separate individual motor programs for every little action, every little movement that we make. Um, and others have a broader idea of motor programs. Um, so like a generalized motor program is the idea of a mechanism that could account for the adaptive and flexible qualities of human coordinated movement behavior. Um, so essentially generalized motor programs would be like a motor program that encapsulates many different actions or movements as opposed to having um, you know, 10 different individual motor programs for 10 related actions. Instead, we could have a generalized motor program that encompasses all of those, and then we just make slight changes depending on the specific needs of that different task. Um, so Richard Schmidt uh, proposed the idea of the generalized motor program, which is what I just described. Um, and the idea is that a generalized motor program is controlling a whole class of actions. So a whole group of actions that share um, unique features. So they share specific features that make those actions related and, and very similar in a lot of ways. Um, and then the person would retrieve the appropriate GMP from the memory and then add movement specific parameters. Okay, so you would use the GMP for that class of actions, and then we would sort of tweak that motor program and tweak how we um, engage in that action, essentially, so that it's specific to that individual movement and to the environmental context. Um, so invariant features refers to the unique set of characteristics that define a GMP. Okay, so if we are categorizing movements based on their, their sort of fixed features um, and then calling that a GMP, a generalized motor program, those invariant features, those are the kind of fixed characteristics of that group that defines that GMP. An example of an invariant feature would be relative time. Uh, so that's the proportion of the total amount of time required by each component of a skill during the performance of that skill. Um, so it's regardless of how fast that movement is happening um, and the components of the movement will take the same proportions of the overall time. Um, so think about it like if you're playing a piece, if you're playing music on a piano and uh, the, the rhythm remains the same no matter how fast you play that song. Um, so the relative time is referring to a sort of the rhythm of the movement regardless of how fast or how slow that movement takes place. Um, so like walking, for example, um, as long as we're still walking, we're in a walking gait, um, so we're not going so fast that we have to change into a running gait, which would be an entirely different uh, coordination pattern. Uh, but assuming we're walking, um, the relative proportions of the amount of time that we spend in each phase and with each component of that overall movement uh, the proportions would remain the same, even if we're moving faster or we're moving slower. Uh, movement specific parameters are the, the features of the GMP uh, that are gonna vary from one skill to another. So um, the GMP is basically the, the motor program that is not specific to the individual movements, but can be applied to a, a large category of movements. And then we would add movement specific parameters. Those are the features that we add um, that meet the specific demands of the situation. Um, so for example, overall duration of the movement or the muscles used to perform the skill. 
Okay, so uh, back to our example of walking faster or slower, the movement specific parameters, um, like if we needed to walk faster, that's a movement specific parameter or slower or step over an object or an obstacle. Um, or in some cases we might use different muscles to perform the same skill. Um, so like maybe we have an injury or dysfunction to a certain muscle and we need to compensate for that, then that would be a movement specific parameter. Um, so I wanna talk for a second about a schema. Um, it's a rule or set of rules that provides the basis for a decision or a basis for identification of something or a basis for how we perform a movement. Uh, it's an abstract representation of rules governing movement in our context here. Um, so it's a schema is developed by abstracting important pieces of information from related experiences and combining them into a type of rule. Um, so like, for example, your concept of what a dog is, is based on seeing many different types of dogs over your lifetime. Um, and so you integrate your idea of what a dog is from all of these different exposures and experiences with dogs. So now if you see a dog, even if it's one you've never seen before, you can still correctly identify it as a dog based on the schema you've built in your mind of the rules that, that exist that tell you what a dog is. Uh, so the reason I brought that up is because we have now Schmidt's schema theory. Uh, it's a theory of how the GMP operates to control coordinated movement. Um, so there's two control components. Um, and so really we've, we've talked about these already, but just putting it into terms of this movement theory. Uh, the GMP is one control component, so it's responsible for controlling the movement coordination patterns of the whole class of actions. Um, so the GMP is providing the invariant features, so the characteristics that are, are in common with all of the movements that are in that class of actions. Uh, then the second control component is the motor response schema. So responsible for providing the specific rules governing the performance of a skill in a situation. So it's providing the specific parameters for that actual action given the, the environmental context and the needs of that movement. Um, so this theory explains how people can successfully adapt a skill in new situations. So you might have the skill of walking but maybe you've never walked through this particular mall and, and had to navigate these people in the exact situation and way that the people are, are creating obstacles in front of you as you walk across the mall. Or it could be like returning a tennis serve. Um, although you might've returned a thousand tennis serves, each one is going to be a little bit different depending on the precise angle and velocity and, and all of the, the different characteristics of that serve. Uh, so each one will be a little bit different. Um, so we can adapt to that new situation and still be able to successfully execute the skill. Um, and that's because of the motor response schema that is adapting the GMP. Um, so this theory claims to solve the degrees of freedom problem through an executive control operation that organizes motor programs and schemas. Um, so essentially we're saying we're, uh, solving the degrees of freedom problem by having specific ways that we develop to, um, or having, you know, these motor programs that we develop over time to be able to answer um, when we need to perform a certain uh, movement. So in that case, we don't have all of these many degrees of freedom that we need to manage and control. Uh, instead, we really just have a plan and we execute that plan without having any control issues. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day.